Welcome KringleCon attendees to HTTP2 because 1 is in fact the loneliest number. My name is Chris Elgy. I work at Counterhack Challenges, building things and breaking things. I'm also in the Army National Guard. I am on the Twitters. I have too many E's in my last name, some certs, and a singing Justin Bieber toothbrush. Chris Davis and I are going to talk to you today about HTTP 1.1 and 2.0 and some of the differences there because it's 2.0 is a technology that most of us are less familiar with. Uh, but it's really pervasive, and, and we'll look at that going forward. Um, so each created about 18 years apart um, and, and kind of preceded by HTTP.9 and 1.0, uh, but really .9.1 and, and 1.1 aren't, aren't terribly different, uh, at least in terms of the, uh, the aspects we're going to look at today. So with 1.1 um, and 2.0, they're both going to be available in, in any browser you're using, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, whatever they will speak uh, both of these technologies. Now with 1.1, our headers are all ASCII. They're all human readable. Uh, each header is a line of code, or a line of ASCII text, where with 2.0, it's all bytecodes. It's binary. Um, so we're, we're not able to read it anymore, but, uh, but it's computers talking to computers so that they can be a little more uh, compact in how they communicate. So that, that saves a little bit of, uh, of overhead there. Also with 1.1, it, it's really a connectionless technology. Uh, your your client, your web browser, asks for one file at a time and gets it back from the web server one one file at a time. Uh, where with 2.0, it's it is connection oriented. You'll, we'll see the term stream pop up a few times uh, to where um, basically a web server can send a bunch of files at once with a single TCP handshake uh, and a single teardown at the end. With 1.1, we do still have some unencrypted, just regular HTTP websites, uh, but of course, most things we're, we're doing anything sensitive on uh, are going to be TLS, and that's you know your social media, your email, uh, or whatever. With, with 2.0, the RFC actually allows for an unencrypted HTTP2 connection, but no browser will speak it. Uh, really, the only tool I've found that will, that will speak unencrypted 2.0 is curl, um, and we'll, we'll play with that here in a little bit. And uh, finally, with 1.1, that's, that's absolutely totally available in any web server you're going to go to. Um, you really have to, have to contrive an instance where, it, where it, that wouldn't be available. Whereas with 2.0, it isn't completely available uh, across the entire internet. But with any top site, with most top sites, uh, it's going to be up. So uh, if we look at the top Alexa sites that fit on my slide, all but three are speaking 2.0 already. And if you think about it from the perspective of these major providers, uh, there, there's a cost savings there, right? With, with these binary headers with, with fewer TCP handshakes and teardowns, there, there are a few fewer bytes in each transaction for a user, uh, which when you're dealing on the scale of these type of, uh, of systems, then that could be a significant cost savings in, in terms of network infrastructure. So, uh, pictorially, we can we can sort of think of it this way, where with 1.1, we would request a URL like slash or index, and then we would get that HTML file back from the server. And then that since that file referenced a JavaScript uh, a script that needs to be added, then we request it, and we get it back. It references an image, we request it, we, we get it back. Maybe some CSS, request it, get it back. All is individual uh, connections with a three-way handshake, uh, the push of the file, and then the four-way teardown. With 2.0, it is, it is simpler. It's a little more uh, kind of fancy in how it does things, but, but there's a single request for slash or index, and then the server can send back all the files that are necessary in a single push. So uh, again, less, less overhead uh, in terms of network traffic. To look at it a bit uh, lower level, let's kind of dive into curl here a bit. So we've got here just curl or give me a website dash v for verbose. Without this, curl would just return the HTML or whatever content comes back from the server. It wouldn't tell us what's going on kind of under the hood. I'm then, then going to specify dash dash HTTP2 because I want to talk HTTP2 because that's what this talk is about. Then we're going to give it a specific URL, HTTPS colon slash slash www.baidu.com slash. That's the website I want. Then I'm going to do this little shorthand for put standard error into standard out. Uh, I'm going to do this because uh, in order to show this one screen at a time, I'm going to pipe standard out through the command less. Without putting standard error into standard out, uh, we wouldn't be able to see 
the um, the information that curl is going to give us about the handshake stuff. Uh, when we curl verbosely, we get the TLS handshake information and and all that all that connection uh, errata in standard error. So if we didn't put it into standard out, then it would it would fly by and wouldn't get caught by the less command. So uh, that's just a little shorthand there again to to combine standard error and standard out. So off we go. Our browser curl uh, goes ahead and reaches out to Baidu and then. Uh, offers up a couple different uh, connection methods using application layer protocol negotiation or ALPN. It's offering H2, which is just shorthand for HTTP2, as you might guess, and then also 1.1. And then goes forward uh, and, and kind of finishes the TLS handshake. Now notice that these uh, these offerings, the, the 2 and the 1.1, these happen as part of the TLS handshake. This is this is before any GET request or anything like that. Uh, this is while they're still determining how they want to speak securely. So, uh, so those are the offers. The Baidu server comes back, says, great, let's talk 1.1, some certificate information. And then here, curl is showing us uh, the regular ASCII request that we're used to seeing, right? As web app pen testers, we're used to the get and the slash and, and all this, the host, uh, the user agent, which of course here is curl, and then uh, give me back anything, uh, any type of data. And then the web server responds with a, a typical ASCII header of 200 OK, uh, here's some stuff that's coming at you. Uh, I don't cache things. Here's a cookie, so I can so I can track your uh, status as we go through. And then, of course, after that comes uh, the HTML. Now it's going to look similar with uh, with Google. We're going to offer HTTP two and one dot one. We'll complete our TLS handshake certificates. And then uh, Google says, hey, let's talk HTTP2, right? I want to save that little bit of overhead, uh, and you're able to talk it, so here we go. Now, this GET request looks a little funny, right? Because we're talking two. We asked for two, we got two uh, back, and, and here's our header requesting 1.1. I think what happened here with curl is that um, it knows we want to see an ASCII header because we gave it the dash V for verbose. Uh, but of course, there are no ASCII headers, so it's got to make something up just just for these uh, for these human eyes looking at it. Uh, so it just sort of defaults to showing get slash HTTP 1.1, even though this really is a 2.0 request. And we can see that in the response from Google HTTP slash 2 200. Uh, this is an OK, and of course, this is actually coming back and forth as, as byte codes, but um, kind of kind of abstracting as as ASCII for us for us humans. So we see that response. Uh, maybe some headers we're less used to seeing. Uh, it's still setting some cookies, right? Because Google's still going to track certain things. Uh, and then looking farther down, we get the uh, the HTML coming back from Google. So uh, there we have it. Uh, just HTTP2 at a at a high level. And uh, now Chris Davis will talk more about looking at the traffic in depth and decoding it in Wireshark.